Hello, my friends. This is part four in a series of videos on Pallas. And in this part four, we're going to talk about the second of three people who are super Pallas people. These are people who have sun conjunct Pallas with only up to a two minute orb. That's happened to be the orb for the people who have it, the strongest of all the people of tens of thousands of people with AA data and among the ones that we have a biography biography for. And this fellow, I don't know how to say his first name, it's a Polish name. I'll just call him Eugene Ibish. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He went from 1896 to 1987. He was a very successful painter. His paintings were in demand and he had a good number of exhibits. He studied art in college and he devoted himself to art. Some of his paintings have strong palace themes. He literally paints palace. You want to see palace? <laughs> I'll show you a painting of palace <laughs> that Ibish painted. And again, this is how we're understanding palace through this research. It's not going to be some golden, glorious, uh, you know, goddess with, you know, very, you know, with all this armor and everything. Just the opposite. Something most of us don't even notice. Has no charisma. No pizzazz, no flesh. And these are the people doing one of the most essential things in life. Overlooked, underappreciated. Palace is often overlooked and underappreciated, as I'm going to show you. And Ibish paints this overlooked and underappreciated quality. It seems like, like why is he even bothering to do this? And I don't even know if he consciously realized it, you know, that he is, I mean, he's driven by, by it and he's feeling it in his bones, but I don't know if he would say it as clearly as I'm going to say it. He is actually communicating to the world something very beautiful, but not flashy. That's so essential for life, the power of Pallas. So his paintings in recent years have auctioned from anywhere to from two hundred sixty-six thousand to twenty-six thousand dollars. So painting for twenty-six thousand dollars. So he's very successful, and after his death in nineteen eighty-seven, continues to have some success um, with with the, with these paintings. Okay, so this gives the website information for where. We got this information. And also a little bit more about Ibish. He was the head of a painting department at War Warsaw Academy of Fine Arts from 1950 to 1969. His artistic achievements were honored with many awards and distinctions. The most prestigious award that he received is the Artistic Prize of the City of Krakow in 1946 and the Prize of the Solomon T. Guggenheim Foundation in New York in 1960. So he's a great painter. He's won lots of awards. Uh, he also founded the uh, Franziska Ibish, which aims to promote young artists, and that's a, a kind of a palace theme, mm -hmm. wanting the talent of others to, to come out and be developed and shared. So this is his birth chart. He has Sun Conjunct Palace with a two-minute orb. So there it is, extremely tight. If you have Sun Conjunct, any asteroid, with up to a three or four minute orb, something like that, it's going to pervade your life in some kind of fairly obvious way, not necessarily the center of what you're doing, but you should see those qualities, that, that theme, that purpose, consistent with your life. Uh, and here we see it in a, of all three people, this one just happens to be the most conspicuous because as a painter, we get to see it. There she is. There is a painting of Pallas. Of course, uh, Ibish didn't call her Pallas. <laughs> he didn't know he had Sun Conjunct Pallas, or that's what's going on. But there's Pallas. You go, well, wait a minute. It's, it's kind of dark and subtle. Yes. Pallas is not flashy. It's a lady, but look at the... Uh, the professional quality of the painting. I mean, it's he's exhibiting his own palace, bringing out his own talent. And what is she doing? 
she's it's a little maybe a little hard to see because it's a, a dark colors but she's got a a book here it might even be a music sheet but i think it's a book resting on something she has her arm her arm folded with her hand on her uh her chin on her hand and just kind of holding very pensive very thoughtful considering carefully what's here she's quiet there's some beautiful flowery thing around her but it's all kind of deep pensive thoughtful this is palace this this says it better than my words that is palace and that is the beauty that is the special quality of palace that we 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 don't usually look at it. We just, there's a lady thinking, you know, she's, maybe she's taking care of stuff, analyzing, just doing daily things. Yes, without that, uh, children don't, don't develop their talents. Things don't come together. The, the individual in the world don't come together. Somebody quietly developing strategies, considering the details, and doing whatever work is needed to bring out something simple and pure and not necessarily to, you know, be flamboyant about it and make, be famous about it, but just to bring out these things and have them expressed. You can almost feel the deep reflection about the circumstances of her life, the feminine quality of healing and wholeness as she ponders solutions to situations comes through the painting. She's thinking through something, considering something. That's what Pallas does. And what's not obvious in this painting is that what Pallas is considering and thinking about is connected to some special quality, to something somebody wants to do and how it's going and should do, that, that they were born to do to some extent, at least one of the options, and how to bring that out. Here's another one, very similar style. Uh, different, uh, she's in different pose, similar colors. Again, she's the thoughtfulness in her eyes, the depth of consideration, the, the way in which these colors flow and mold together reflects kind of the depth and breadth of her sensitivity. So Ibish avoids glamour and fantasy. Nothing glamorous or fantastic about this, but it's it's deep. It can bring you into it. You have to become quieter, deeper, and more appreciative to really feel the importance of this. Powers is effective and powerful and not glamorous. She's strong, thoughtful, he captures the subtle power and beauty of Pallas. Thoughtful women who bring strength, unity, and solutions. And I would also say integrity in this case, you can feel from her. Ibish sees what too many of us overlook. That is a painting of Pallas. That's what Pallas does. Ibish has son conjunct Pallas. He is feeling this. These paintings are a kind of projection of his own awareness that he sees and feels this. And as we said before, the, the mother, the female, is the first contact for the child and the, tends to be the leader in being aware of all of the details of the children and of people in general, not necessarily just children. And what their challenges are to bring out what's inside of them. So, yeah, so, so that's it. There's another one. He's drawing palace one after another. Again, the pensive, thoughtful mood. You know, she's looking down in this direction this time. Another portrait of palace. What I'm saying is that these are paintings of palace. It's not the palace you imagined. It's not the palace in the Greek myth. There's nothing glamorous and great and with golden armor and, and strong. Palace is just the opposite. 
There's a strength, but it's an inner strength. You can see in, in the expression a kind of quiet inner determination, concern and care, the folded hands. Not forcing, trying to bring together. Notice the similarity of her expression and the expression of Ventura Alonso. Very similar facial expression. The seriousness and pensiveness in these paintings as Pallas takes on the real issues of life, things that are deep and important. Specifically, how we get people of all ages to bring out their blessing, their gift, and be able to negotiate that into the world. Otherwise, life has lost its meaning, its purpose, its, its zing. Here's another palace, one after another. And this one she's reading. And she's out in a natural setting. The beauty of it, that's how palace is. Palace lives in a world of rolling hills and mountains in the background. It lives in this sense of natural giftedness from nature born out of the head of Zeus in the myth. There she is. And what is she doing? She's reading a book. Thoughtful, pensive, careful. Does she look glamorous? Does she look exotic? No. This is the beauty we overlook in our interest in what's exotic and more superficially beautiful. This is what makes life work the humility, the simplicity. And Pallas doesn't need the outer beauty because what's really important is the inner purpose and dedication and meaning. That's what Pallas is all about. The dignity, the sense of purpose, quiet thoughtfulness, conservative quality, humility comes through in these paintings. Quiet, simple, conservative, we just overlook it, but it is special. So he is painting something special that we don't usually take account of or recognize. Here's yet another one. This lady's a little bit younger, I think, than the other ones. And she, even at her young age, she's demonstrating the deep thoughtfulness, focus, and simple elegance that Pallas is inclined to develop. There it is. The expression on the face. It's almost as if each one of these palace paintings captures another thought process, another concern, <clears throat> another way in which palace is trying to assess a situation and make its way forward. And here's another one. Now we see it in later life. Palace working <clears throat> at different stages of life. You can feel the life she's gone through. Uh, again, looking down, looking within, looking into what is. You can kind of feel all of the experience. She's rugged looking, the work that she's done. Uh, yeah. I think there's almost a, a kind of a sense of satisfaction in the face. All the um, strong arms here, the strength of Pallas after years of dedication, uh, it's a beauty we often overlook. Here's another one, and the lady looks... I think pretty clearly unglamorous, very, very, um, you know, it's not dowdy or something, just like not kind of a prim, old kind of look. And the simplicity and lack of glamour are strong, particularly strong here. Here he's really saying, you know, it's not about flashiness. These are the people 
who are making life work. These are the people who are bringing out, who are teaching the children, helping people, listening to what's really going on, making things move forward. A beauty we often overlook. Here's another painting. Um, you might say it's a bit more sensual in the sense she's naked. Um, and what is she doing? She's reading again the reading, the thoughtfulness. And here you, maybe you pick up a little bit on the, uh, you might almost say maternal side or the, there is, you know, the nakedness of it. <clears throat> Being on a bed, um, reclining like this. So, and, and thinking, uh, being aware, and you know, it looks like a newspaper, which something like that looks almost like being aware of what's going on in the world, the social context. Being prepared to make that connection. She's in her personal life, obviously. She's home, evidently alone, just comfortable looking at the newspaper. So from the personal world, making the connection, thoughtfulness, pensiveness, he's showing it in all kinds of different situations and environments, the many sides of palace. Now here's another side. It, it, it feels like he just wants to feel the power of palace through every situation, different ages, different settings. And here we see the kind of Venusian symmetry and um, elegance in this more Asian, I guess, Japanese style painting. So he's showing his versatility clearer. He's, you know, obviously influenced by other painting styles. And what does it have in common with the other style? Looking down, the pensiveness, the thoughtfulness, and the humility. And here there's a kind of symmetry and beauty in the eyes. I think he's showing that this beauty of the soul maybe being portrayed in, in, the, in the eyes or face, almost as if it doesn't matter whether you can see it or not. On the outside, the thoughtfulness, the care. So more pictures of Pallas in her many ways that she is expressed. <laughs> Always intelligent and thoughtful. Which is also not these simplified things. You know, when we say, oh, she's maternal, like what, almost implying, well, she cares, nourishing, whatever. We have such a simple vocabulary for what it means to be a male or a female or whatever. And this is one aspect of life that very often women have the first contact with. And so far, it's always women, doesn't have to be, showing their thoughtfulness, their concern, their strategizing, and their kind of holistic perspective. Now, this one I think is very interesting. Here's another aspect of palace. She doesn't look particularly happy, does she? I mean, she looks like an expression of, I mean, you can read into it what you want. You know, I'm getting a sense of some situation out there. Like she's looking out, almost like she's looking out of a window or something, out at the circumstances, not particularly pleased with, with it and what her situation is in relationship with it. Her arms are crossed. She's, again, quiet, thoughtful, and not pleased with, with her circumstance or having to think, strategize about it. This shows the difficulty of bringing your talents into the world. It's not a simple and easy process. In this painting, the girl does not look particularly happy. Her clothing has a strong and clear cultural style. Something there about a very specific style. And I think the point there is that these very specific 
demands on us to fit into a very specific culture when those cultural demands are very strong, it makes it sometimes more difficult for palace because palace is going to have to bring that specific cultural style into your unique qualities. And that might be a bigger bridge to cross there. I don't think I'm reading too much into these pictures. I think that's what he's showing. She is perhaps striving to develop a strategy strategy to make strategy to make her life more fulfilling within the social context of her life. It feels to me like she's considering some situation in her life and how she can express herself in it, the challenge and dilemma of Pallas. Now this is an interesting picture of Pallas. Uh, again, we have the deep, dark colors. Again, we have the pensive look, the, the focus, the simplicity, the nothing flashy about it. She's just, again, you know, at, at home or something. Um, and also the lack of glamour. If you look at her, uh, you know, her, her uh, bodily, um, you know, her body here, her, her, again, this fairly strong arms, strong hands, fairly strong torso. So he's showing, he, he's, he's not... He's realistic. Pallas is realistic and not caricatured. Very intelligent, very sensitive paintings, very realistic about what people are actually like. So there are the breasts that are somewhat conspicuous with the conspicuous nipples. Maybe she's just given birth or something. She has a soft face and hair, but strong, clear, thinking through things, considering everything. In this, I'll read from the, uh, the slide. In this painting, the color patterns reveal a kind of raw intensity. I think that goes with the, the being naked. And look at the colors. He's got these dark blues. They look almost like black and blue coming through. And the red, uh, of, like a, the feeling of the blood, it's like, the challenges, the, the, the things we go through, um, that, that the, the battle of, of Pallas to, to bring resolution, to bring what's in our hearts into the world. Again, the gaze is unwavering, looking straight ahead, unwavering. Naked body is not glamorous, not so different from a man's body with the exception of course, of the breasts and the soft face. Ivish recognizes the power and importance of palace. Many of us overlook it. We like to say phrases like, oh, she's a strong woman. Well, there's, this is the strength, uh, one aspect of, of a strong woman, to help people find their way and do the real work that's needed to bring what's what we've been blessed with and to negotiate that into the world. So that's it for Ivnitz. Um, so we get to see pictures of Pallas. And I think we're at 23 minutes. I'm not going to spend as much time on the third one. So I think we can fit this into our, make this the fourth and last series in the video. Although he also very clearly exhibits the qualities of Pallas. Uh, Furman Gamier, 1869-19. to 19, You know what? I am going to make this a separate video. That way we'll have them all in separate things. If you want to just dive into Gamier, let's put him in one video. We've got, um, you know, Eugene Eibnitz and well, how, how do you say his name? <laughs> uh, Ibish in another video. So let's go ahead. Even though It'll be a short video, but let's put... Furman Gemier in a separate video, so we have that separately easier to find and get to if you want to. Okay, my friends, I'll see you in part five, the last part of the series on palace. Thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.